Hello, my name is Maria Miller from MathMammoth.com. In this lesson we are going to study two-step equations. It means that there are two operations we need to do to both sides of the equation, such as maybe subtract something from both sides and then divide the both sides by something. And for example here we have the variable here and the unknown is multiplied by 2 and then 5 is added. So there's both multiplication and addition that has happened, and we need to undo both of them. Over here, there's subtraction and there's division. We need to undo both of them, so there's going to be two steps into solving the equation. Over here, let's start here. 2x plus 5 equals 21. Now, generally there are actually two ways to go about it. You could undo this multiplication by 2 by dividing both sides by 2. Or you could undo the addition of 5 by subtracting 5. But usually one way is a little bit easier, maybe avoiding fractions or something like that. In this case, it is easier to first subtract 5, because then you won't have to deal with fractions. So I will subtract 5 from both sides. And then it leaves 2x here alone, right? Now here I get 16. And now it is very easy, you just divide both sides by 2, right? And get x equals 8. If I had done it the other way around, I would have gotten a fraction here, 5 over 2. So that's why this became easier. Let's do the same here. There's a multiplication and then there's a subtraction. But let's first get rid of the minus 12, so that we have the x term here alone. The 3x will be left alone. So I will add 12, of course, to both sides. And here, these cancel, so I have 3x alone. Over here, negative 15 plus 12 will be negative 3. And now, 3 times x. I undo that, so I divide both sides by 3. We get x alone. Over here, negative 3 divided by 3 is negative 1. A simple solution. With this equation, I will show you a way to note what you're going to do to the equation here in the margin, so to speak. So I'm going to draw here a line, and then this is my marginal note, okay? And 5 minus 2y equals 16. Again, there's actually several ways you can start solving this. The way I'm going to do it now is I want to have y, or the term with y, here alone on this side, so I'll get rid of this 5. That means I will subtract 5 from both sides. I'm going to mark it here. This means subtract 5 from both sides. So when this 5 minus 5, it leaves this alone, negative 2y. Notice that we will not be left with 2y. We will be left with negative 2y. Okay? Then 5, this disappears. The negative sign does not disappear. And here 16 minus 5 leaves me 11. Okay? My next step here, of course, there's a multiplication by negative 2. So I need to undo that by dividing both sides by negative 2. Divide both sides by negative 2 is what this means here. After that, I will be left with y alone on this side. Yeah, that's what I want. Now here, I do the division 11 divided by negative 2. Okay, that's going to give me a fraction, a negative fraction, right? It's going to be a negative 11 over 2. But I can do that. I can give it as a mixed number. It's negative 11 over 2 or negative 5 and a half. Here, again, I will want to have the x or the term with x here alone. So I'll first get rid of this plus 1. Let me make my margin here. I will first subtract 1 from both sides and that will get rid of this plus 1. So, I'm left with x over 5 on this side. Over here I do 4 minus 1, so that's 3. And now, x is divided by some number, so I multiply both sides by that number, by 5. So now it leaves x alone, yeah, and then here we go, 3 times 5, 15. Okay, that was pretty simple again. And you should check your solution by putting 15 in place of x here. 15 divided by 5. That's 3. 3 plus 1, yeah, it's 4. So it checks. I'm not taking time in the video, though, because it would make my video much longer if I check each of my solutions. Here we have something different. Here we have b minus 5 over 3 
equals 7. This time I cannot start out by trying to get rid of the minus 5 because I have this division here by 3. This time we need to start by multiplying both sides by 3. Okay? Multiply both sides by 3. And let me show how it looks like if I have 3 times and then this here. Over here I get 3 times 7, of course. Now those 3's cancel, right? This 3 and this 3 cancels out. So we have b minus 5 now equals 21. And now, now I just get rid of that minus 5 by adding 5 to both sides. So then I have b alone here and 26 on this side. This one, maybe again you want to flip the sides first so you get your variable on this left side n over negative 3 minus 7 equals 2. And now, okay, this is similar to what we had here, this one, it just has more negatives there. We want to have this term with n alone here, so we get rid of this minus 7 first by adding 7 to both sides. And then that leaves n over negative 3 here, and here 2 plus 7, 9. And now it's a simple division equation, n divided by something, so I have to multiply by negative 3. And that leaves n alone. And then 9 times negative 3 is negative 27. I'll solve. Okay, I'll solve this one first and then we come to this geometry problem. Here, 8x over 9 minus 1 equals negative 3. This is the same thing as what we had here. I want to have the x term alone here, so I'll first get rid of this negative 1 or subtract 1. 1 is subtracted, so I'll add 1 to both sides. And then I'll get 8x over 9 here alone. Over here, negative 3 plus 1 would be negative 2. And now what? Do you remember? We dealt with this when we had the lesson about multiplication and division equations. This is the same as 8 ninths times x. The fraction 8 ninths times x, okay? Here it is, the fraction 8 ninths. And to undo that, I will multiply by its reciprocal. Okay, technically it is a multiplication equation, and so I can divide both sides by this fraction. But remember, when you divide by a fraction, the rule is to change that into a multiplication by the reciprocal. So that is why I'm going to just straight on multiply by 9 over 8. You see what happens? 9 over 8, and then 8x over 9, then over here, 9 over 8, times negative 2. And see now, 8s cancel, 9s cancel. And we have x alone. Over here, I need to multiply negative 2 times 9, negative 18 over 8. Now that simplifies to negative 9 over 4, which is then negative 2 and 1 fourth. Now lastly, this geometry problem here is an, a triangle. These little marks mean that those two sides are congruent. So it is an isosceles triangle, okay? This side and this side are equal, congruent. And this side is 13 units. P equals 52 means the perimeter is 52. S's are unknown, we need to solve that. And I'm sure you can solve it without using algebra. But let's practice writing equations and understanding how that process goes. Before I do the equation, I will also draw you a bar diagram. Because imagine that I was able to open this triangle and have my 13 here, okay, like that, and then S here, well, S is longer, sorry. S and S, like that. Like a long stick or whatever, and the total, I know the total, the perimeter is the total, it's 52. That is my bar diagram that matches with the triangle. Either way, now we will write an equation. Okay, we will add these together and it is 52. So there's 13 plus s plus s equals 52. Of course, s plus s is 2s, right? And let me write that first. 2s plus 13 equals 52. Okay, that's the final equation that I'm going to start solving now. It is exactly like this one here. 
similar type. To solve it, first I'll get rid of this third thing by subtracting it from both sides. That leaves 2s over here, and over here we get 39. And then 2 times s equals something, so I need to divide by 2. Divide both sides by 2. And so s is alone now, and 39 divided by 2. It's almost 40 divided by 2. In fact, it is between 38 divided by 2 and 40 divided by 2. So it is between 19 and 20, halfway between 19 and 20. 19 and a half. Alright, so we're all done with this, and I hope it was helpful.